Hey everybody, welcome. In this particular session, we're going to be talking about what each one of your negative emotions is signaling to you and how you can learn to use each negative emotion to your advantage to improve your mental health. Uh, my name is Ty Hicks. If you don't know who I am, founder of mentalhealthcoaching.com and the SSS conditioning method. We've had over 400 people we've helped uh, recover from anxiety and depression, um, typically reducing their feelings of anxiety or depression in about uh, 90 days, about 75% or more on average. And I do these uh, lessons for you guys because I used to be suicidal and have really bad mental health and I want everybody to have the mental health they deserve because you deserve to have it, you just need to learn how to obtain it. Um, so this little framework I'm going to teach you, I kind of stumbled upon through a couple sessions years ago that I did with clients, and I found that this was pretty helpful. It really helped people out quite a bit, and I wanted to kind of bring it back and refresh it a little because I haven't talked about it in a while. And so the terminology that we use for this little framework is thinking of every emotion that you have as an action signal. So think of every single negative emotion that you have as a signal that you need to take some type of action. And so when you look at it this way, every negative emotion that you experience actually becomes useful to you. It becomes kind of like, you know, a signal, like just in the same way if you're you know, driving down the road and you use the green light and the red light and the stop sign and all these different signals to help you get where you wanna go, it can be the very much the same thing. Your negative emotions are just a signal to you that there's some type of action that needs to take place. So I wanna kinda of unpack what each one of the common negative emotions are and, and what they're signaling to you. So we'll start with anxiety. So actually, before I, I dive into that, let me back up just slightly. We feel emotions because of the meaning that we give things. That's a really important thing to keep in mind. So um, the reason why one person might say, go on a roller coaster and they feel really nervous and apprehensive is because they associate a disempowering or negative meaning to the roller coaster. They may give it a meaning that it's unsafe or they might die or something bad might really, really occur. Whereas their friend who's in line for the roller coaster is excited because the meaning they give it is, oh, it's of course it's totally safe, but it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be exciting, it's gonna be exhilarating. Different meanings different emotional responses to the same stimuli. I'll give you another example. Let's say um, a brother and sister both experienced the death of their parent. So the, let's say their mother dies. Um, let's say the brother is of course sad for a couple weeks or a couple months, but you know, he kind of moves on with his life and yeah, he misses his mom, but you know, he's kind of experienced a healthy grieving where he's kind of moving on and trying to honor his mom's memory and those types of things. Whereas his sister perhaps, let's say, is really hung up and dwelling and really just doesn't seem to be able to get over the fact that her mother died. Well, they both literally experienced the same event. You could say they both experienced the same loss. But the difference in how they respond emotionally is going to depend on the meaning that they give it. Okay, more than likely, the brother in this scenario would be giving the death of the mother a meaning of, well, of course it's sad, and of course, you know, I miss my mom, but, you know, we all have our time, and, you know, it, it, I, she's resting in peace, she's not in pain anymore, and, you know, I can't change the past. Right? He's probably going to have a series of meanings or beliefs like that, whereas the sister is going to have probably a series of beliefs of, she was taken from me. She was stolen from me. I lost my absolute best friend. She left a gaping hole that will never be filled. Different meanings, different emotions. Okay, So meaning is really what creates all emotion. So whenever you're having a negative emotion pop up, it means that there is some type of a negative meaning that's being associated to whatever just triggered you. So Let's unpack the five very common negative emotions and what they are signaling to you. The first one is anxiety. So whenever you feel anxiety, okay, the simple indication there is that you are currently at the edge. You are at the current edge of your comfort zone. So you are in a moment of uncertainty where you don't know exactly how things are going to go, and perhaps you will never know how things are going to go in that particular situation. So you are up against your edge of comfort, 
And that's a good thing. That means that you are about to grow so long as you utilize the opportunity. See, what most people do is when they start to feel anxious, they peel back. They immediately retreat back into their comfort zone. So think of it like a bubble, right? Like you're pushing up against the edge of that bubble. And what you want to do is not retreat, because if you retreat, then the edges of that comfort zone are going to stay exactly the same, or they may even peel back and you continuously feel like you are living a smaller and smaller life. So when anxiety is popping up, what that's telling you is you're on the edge of the bubble. It means you need to just press a little bit into it. You need to lean a little bit into it. And there are some tricks you can use to make that happen. So the first big one I would say is instead of focusing on what you were afraid might happen, you need to instead focus on how you want it to go. So a common example I work with with my clients is feeling anxious in a social situation or a work situation. So if you're, say, about to present something to your team and you're getting all apprehensive about it, that just simply means that you are not totally certain and comfortable in that arena yet. It doesn't mean you can't be. It doesn't mean you are unsafe. It just means you need to get yourself more comfortable with the uncertainty of that. You need to move past your current comfort zone and you need to prepare right and prepare doesn't mean sit and wait and not take action and overthink yourself to death prepare means come up with a vision of how you want it to go come up with a plan of how you want it to go and start taking action towards that plan that's what you need to do if you ever run into anxiety okay so that's all anxiety is telling you is you're up against your comfort zone and that you need to lean into it a little bit okay depression the signal of feeling depressed is a signal that there is a very big mismatch between your ex expectations about how life should be and how life currently is. So the formula for fulfillment is when our life conditions match our expectations of our life. When there is a mismatch, we feel dissatisfied. When there is a huge mismatch, it means we feel really upset and when there is a big mismatch and we think there is nothing we can do to change it, then we typically will feel depressed. So what this simply means is that you need to close that gap. You need to create a, uh, a more of a symmetry between how life is uh, and how you expect life to be. So that may mean that you either, in many cases, it's going to mean you simply need to create a vision of how you want your life to be and you need to start taking responsibility and action for making that happen. Very often when people are in a depressed state, and I'll speak for myself as well, when I was feeling suicidal, I was taking almost no responsibility for my life. I was blaming everybody else. I was blaming events from the past. I was blaming other people. And blame will never, ever, ever empower you. It will never make your life better. The only way you can make your life better is you take the power back that you've given to these outside events and these outside people. And you say, you know what? What can I do to make my life better? And as soon as you start to do that, the depression will wane as soon as you start taking action. So that would be the first thing that that's signaling to you is that you need to take some form of action. The other signal it might be giving you is that you need to adjust some expectations that you might be holding on to. You might be holding on to some unrealistic expectations for yourself, for your life, for other people, things that you need to let go of. An example of that would be um, a common one I'm seeing right now with a lot of my clients is they have these very intense expectations about how other people should treat them. Like, you know, well, if you're a real friend, you will always invite me to your home whenever you're inviting other people to your home. It's like, that's kind of unrealistic, you know. Um, or another one was, uh, I just had a consultation with someone and her expectation was anytime I'm online, my friends should message me. It's like, okay, you can hold on to that expectation, but what are the chances that that's really going to be met? You know, pretty unlikely, pretty rare. So yeah, chances are, if you're feeling depressed, you're holding on to an expectation that is outside of your control to even enact, which is like trying to play a board game, but the only way you can win the board game is if the other players do what they're supposed to do, and it doesn't matter what you do, right? That's kind of ridiculous. So you want to amend that. Okay, that's what that's signaling to you, so you need to create a more of a symmetry. Um, third, low self-esteem. Okay, if you're feeling low self-esteem, it is a signal to you more than likely that you need to take action, right? Um, we tend to feel less and less self-esteem the less action we take because we start to feel 
bad that we are not um, improving our life and taking power into our own hands. Um, and then also similarly on low self-esteem, you may have a series of expectations you're holding on to for yourself that may be unrealistic or unfair or unkind, and you need to amend those. Um, I remember several years ago, I had this expectation on myself that every single one of my clients, I should be able to help them turn their whole life around in a single session. And um, my self-esteem was very low at that time because, of course, that's a pretty unrealistic expectation. I have created major breakthroughs with clients in single sessions many times, but if I hold that requirement and expectation on myself to do that every time, it's going to be pretty, pretty challenging. Okay. Four, feeling low motivation or dread. That is a signal to you that you do not have a compelling vision of how you want the thing to go. If you're feeling avoidance, if you're feeling um, uh, some type of a dread, if you feel like what you're about to do is a chore, it means that you are not deciding what outcome or result you really want from that experience, what outcome or result you really hope to get. Um, and you're not taking action towards that. You're instead focusing on, say, like other people's demands, um, what you think uh, has to get done, but not things that you want to get done, things of that nature. So you need to put yourself back in the driver's seat of your own life and ask yourself, well, what do I want to get out of this? What is the, how do I want my day to go? What do I want to get accomplished at work? Right? What is the, uh, what is the compelling vision I have for my life at home with my partner, with my family? Stuff like that, right? That'll start to make you feel um, excited. And focus less on the process of getting things done and more on the outcome. What are you going to eventually get out of this? And that will increase your motivation. Okay, five, the fifth one is anger. Anger is a signal to you that one of your expectations or one of your rules has been violated. Um, another word for this would be your shoulds. So if you're getting angry at somebody else, what you would want to do is examine what that should is, right? So what is the should that you are putting on to them that you think they should be abiding by? You might be angry at yourself for a similar reason. And so if you're feeling anger, then it is also because there's a mismatch between how you want life to be and how life actually is. So you got to create a symmetry there. If you're getting angry at something that's within your power to control, of course you need to change it. Take control, take action, make it how you want it to be. If you are feeling anger in response to somebody else, you either need to, uh, theoretically, the, the first place I would have you look is to the expectations you're putting onto that person and onto that relationship, because more than likely you need to amend some of those expectations. And you might just be holding on to an unrealistic expectation, uh, or you might be holding on to a rule or an expectation that isn't unrealistic, it's just that the other person doesn't even know that that's what you expect of them. And so you need to communicate with them and say, hey, look, this is really what I need from you. Are you willing to provide that? Um, or you might just be holding on to something unrealistic, like all my friends need to message me online every time I'm online, right? That's going to be a problem. So that's anger, okay? So those are the main negative emotions. Those are the main signals that they are creating for you. So if you start to think of every negative emotion like a signal, an action signal, it empowers you. It makes you feel much less reactive to your life. And it means that every little negative emotion can actually serve you. It's almost like its own little tiny coach, you know, kind of nudging you and telling you like, hey, here's what you need to do. Here's what you need to get done. So if you can remember that, commit that to memory, maybe keep those on a, a sheet of paper and keep that near you, keep that on your person. Uh, whenever you're feeling that negative feeling, you can take that out and remind yourself like, oh yeah, this is just signaling to me that I need to do this. Then you'll get a lot more empowerment in your life. So um, stick with that for a couple weeks and you'll definitely see a change for sure. Okay. So as always, we'd love to see your comments. Let us know if this was helpful, uh, which of these maybe is the biggest one for you. Um, and then of course, as you practice this, I'd love to get feedback on what uh, kind of results you get. Um, so thanks again for listening and I'll be excited to see you in the next one. Take care.